Okay, Samata, please uh, introduce yourself fully. Tell us about your work and, and please tell us a story. Namaste, everyone. My name is Samata Sharma. Um, so I, I enjoy, I really enjoy um, telling stories and I am very, very happy to see how big this storytelling event has become. Uh, I'd like to thank so many of you present from so many different uh, time zones. And 40, 41 is a great number to have an audience, you know, the huge. But it's just a bit unfortunate that I can, I'm talking over my phone, so I only see four, four of us. I don't see the rest of you, so I miss the live interaction. But uh, yeah, thank you all for being present. About me, so I'm an ex-meditation teacher. <laughs> it's funny that uh, my session comes right after the talk on mindfulness. Um, and uh, yeah, I kind of gave up on that because it was heavy. It is difficult to be a meditation teacher or a mindfulness teacher. So I'm also dealing with COVID. I've been sick, very sick the last one month. Uh, although I've tested negative, I am still struggling with pneumonia. So I may start to cough a bit uh, at times. So apologies in advance for that. And um, yeah, I'd like to tell a story about Sita Devi enters the fire. So this is a very controversial story in the last uh, 70, 80 years in India because there have been many re -interp. It comes from the epic Ramayana. The rendition is by a Tamil scholar called Kamban. So it's Kamba Ramayana. And it is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the youth, part of it is about war. It's the chapter on war. So here we have uh, Rama, who's just killed the 10 headed, um, 10 headed demon king, Ravana. And uh, it's, it has been a long, exhausting battle. And there have been much bloodshed on both sides particularly on the side of Ravana. And since the battle happens in his island, uh, there is large scale destruction of his peoples on his island. And Rama is sitting right, right beside the battleground. So usually once a king wins over another king, there is a huge big procession into the uh, City. Eric, sorry, Eric, can you give me a five minute warning if I'm, if I'm going long on time, please? Just some something to. Yeah, you're doing me. fine. Yes, I, okay. I will. Okay. So then, uh, but Rama has a vow from, he, that he's given to his stepmother saying that he will not move into any, uh, he will only live in forests and out of civilization spaces. So although he's, he's a victor now over the island of Sri Lanka, which is Lanka in those times, he is unable to enter, he, he doesn't want to enter the city. But what he wants to do is he wants to crown the brother of Ravana, Vibhishana, who supports Dharma and fights on the side of Ram. So what he does is he sends his younger brother Lakshmana to crown the brother of Ravana, the king of Sri Lanka. So this is the scene. So what happens then is that all of, so because this is such a battle of Dharma and Adharma and Dharma as one, we have all the different beings present there. We have the Trimurtis, the Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Vishnu himself being Rama in the situation. But Shiva, Brahma present, we have all the different devatas, the, uh, the, the Gandharvas, the dancers, the musicians. We have the king of, uh, basically the king of the heavens, Indra present, everyone's present. So when Vibhishana has coronated the king, Lord, uh, Lord Brahma, Brahma sends the celestial architect called Maya to design a city for Vibhishana. So quickly in the clicking of a, the, a finger, Maya, Maya creates a beautiful city for Vibhishana in the island of devastation, which is what Lanka is after the battle. And uh, he sets it with jewels. It's just this beautiful, marvelous city. And uh, Lakshmana, Rama doesn't enter the city, but Lakshmana takes 
um, Vibhishana to the throne, a golden throne studded with gems. And uh, so traditionally, the waters of the sacred rivers and all of the oceans are uh, poured on the new king. And the devas in this case, the celestial beings, bring all the waters quickly. And then Vibhishana is, uh, Vibhishana is made king. Now then Rama, who's still sitting on the battleground, he summons Hanuman, the, the monkey warrior, who was very, very dedicated to Rama. He then tells uh, Hanuman, go tell my wife, uh, that Ravana had kidnapped. Go find her and tell her what happened in the battlefield. So Hanuman is extremely happy to be the, the carrier of good, good, good tides, uh, tidings for the, for the princess Sita. And uh, so he, he runs, he jumps on trees, runs to the forest where she is. She is in a forest called Ashokavana. Now, Ashoka means no sadness. So she is in the forest of no sadness, but unfortunately, she's been very, very sad. She's been lovesick, um, separated from her husband. She's been tortured by Ravana to succumb to his lust for many months, and she hasn't given in. And she's in a really pathetic state. Ravana puts for her these warrior women, the Rakshasas around her, who keep goading her. So she's been continuously goaded uh, to, to succumb to Ravana. So Hanuman jumps across mountains, runs to Sita Devi, and then narrates this whole tale to her. Then uh, as Hanuman narrates the tale to Sita Devi of Rama's victory over Ravana, slowly you can see that Sita Devi uh, changes from the dry twig that she looks like before into this uh, first a tree which is green and then the shoots and then she finally becomes like a tree that's blooming. <coughs> and but, but she doesn't open her mouth. She's just sitting there speechless. So suddenly Hanuman is confused. He asks Sita Devi, don't you believe what I say? Why don't you utter a word in response? And I've been talking for so long. And then finally Sita Devi opens her mouth and says, I am speechless. I'm going mad with the happiness on one side, but I also don't know what to tell you who is always bringing me really good news. Uh, I would like to give you all the three worlds and all the riches in them, but that will not compensate for the news that you have brought me. And that's how she receives Hanuman's news. So next Hanuman looks at all the women warriors around Sita who have been taunting her. And he asks Sita, mother, can I kill all these demon women? They have been really torturing you. I hate the sight of them and I want to do away with them. And then what happens is till then the demon warrior women were like really arrogant and rude and noxious. Immediately when they see this huge towering Hanuman, they fall at the feet of Sita Devi, asking for protection of Sita Devi, from Sita Devi. And Sita Devi then accepts their, uh, accepts their uh, surrender and tells Hanuman, Hanuman, please grant me a boon that, uh, that you will not harm these women. And, uh, and Hanuman asks why? And then she says, one of the reasons that I'm in this trouble is the Indian thing, right? Because of my own bad karma. But another reason is also these women were just, you know, taking the tidings of their king. They were just doing their job and they shouldn't be punished for that. And so uh, the, the Rakshasis are let, they let go. Then Rama, once then Vibhishana on the other side in the battleground, Vibhishana has been coronated king. And of course he wants to thank Rama. So he's, he's brought a, this nice procession to Rama. He falls on the feet of Rama and thanks him so much for both the honor of making him king, but also of, uh, you know, give, yeah, basically giving him the opportunity, protecting Dharma, et cetera, et cetera. Then Rama says, 
okay, and can you now bring me my wife? He requests Vibhi. Vibhishana to bring, uh, bring him his wife. So basically Ramayana is because Sita Devi is kidnapped by Ravana, right? So the whole battle he's fought for this woman that he loves and he wants to see her, he's anxious. So the next he sends the king to bring Sita Devi to, to him. So Vibhishana comes to Sita Devi and falls at her feet and thanks her again for, uh, say sorry for all the sorrow she's gone through on the island and then thanks her for uh, liberation from Adharma, Adharma being Ravana. Um, and then they have a conversation that Vibhishana says that, look, I want to take you to Rama, but I want to take you to Rama like the queen that you are. I don't want you to take, take you to, Ra, uh, to Rama in the sorry state where she's just wearing old clothes, her hair is all disheveled, and uh, she just basically is not neither clean, she hasn't eaten for many days. So much of the, uh, her imprisonment, she's starved. And Vibhishana wants to decorate her before he takes her to Rama. But Sita Devi has a conversation saying that, um, look, I don't want Rama to mistake me. I want him to see and the people of the city to see how I really am. If I go very decorated, maybe they will mistake me. But somehow Vibhishana convinces her that he wants to take her to Rama as a queen. And then they start to decorate her. She, the different devis, this again celestial beings, they start to dress her. She's, she's given many jewels. She's wrapped around in a silk sari, which is bright orange in color, like the sun. Um, uh, not, not in sunrise, but like the golden sun. And then they put so many flowers on her. And then they're actually, her flowers are so sweet smelling that they're actually bees right in her hair because they come towards the flowers on her body. Many jewels are brought to her. She's, uh, yeah, so she's beautifully decorated. She's put on the flying chariot, the Pushpaka Vimana. And, uh, and then many of the, her, uh, many women go along with her to accompany her. But then also the, the Demon Rakshashi is who now chain sides also accompany her on the Pushpaka Vimana, on the aircraft to take her to the battlefield where Rama is. So then when Sita Devi climbs onto this aircraft, she's flown to the, to the battlefield. And then when she alights from the aircraft, there is a, everybody rushes in to see her, you know, so there is a stampede that all the people rushing in, all the celestial beings are there, all the Ashuras, the Rakshas, the demons are there. Everybody wants to see Sita Devi for whom this huge battle has been fought. Both Ravana was mad about her and Rama has come so far and has taken so much effort for the Sita Devi. So everybody wants to see her. At that point, what Vibhishana does is he does crowd control. He chases away all of the poor people and lets only the, the, the celestial beings and the kings and warriors to remain near Sita. But, but at this point, Rama gets upset. He calls Vibhishana to him and gives him a teaching on Dharma. He says, look Vibhishana, what did these poor people do that you're chasing them away? Did, did they harm anybody in any way? No. Don't they have equal right to see that the Queen Sita like the other people do? So this is not dharma that you chase away the poor people and keep all the rich people. Everybody should have access. It's okay if there is stampede or it's okay if it's too crowded. It's not a problem. So Rama, in other point... Excuse me, Samata, pardon me for oh, interrupting. Oh, oh. Uh, it's, going, it's going beautifully. Now you have titled your, your episode, Sita Devi Enters the Fire. And you have about another five minutes. So, so uh, please complete the, and, and tell us what happens. Okay. So then, uh, so then this is what happens. And then, um, then Sita Devi comes down from the flight. But when she sees Rama, you can see that she starts to cry. She starts to cry. First, it's such a shock for her to meet so many people on the, oh, suddenly so many people. But also she's not sure if her husband or the people will accept her because she has been in the harem of Ravana for so many months. So she starts to cry. 
And seeing her tears, you could see the spark of anger in Drama's face. When she comes to him, he says in, the, in, in front of all of the people, he says, look, you who have come here with all these beautiful clothes and these garments, how do I know that you haven't participated in, Dra in Dravana's festivities in the last months that you've been with him? How do I know that you haven't eaten his sweet meats and had a jolly time? Either prove to me that you haven't done it or you go your own way. This is what he says. Now, this hits Sita so sharply because this is exactly her wound. This is exactly what she's embarrassed and hurt about. And when she hears Rama, her husband, say openly, it, uh, blame her for having done all these things, she gets so, such a shock that she calls Lakshmana, the brother of Rama, and says, look, uh, Lakshmana, my life is not worth it. I, I kept my life going so that I can be with my husband and united with him. But if he doesn't accept me, I don't want to live. So you light right here the funeral fire and I will jump into it. So uh, Lakshmana looks at Rama and Rama says yes. He nods his acquiescence and Lakshmana lights the funeral fire. All of the people start to wail. The devas start to wail. The celestial beings are wailing. The people are wailing. But nobody is able to go beyond the words of Sita and Rama there. And these are the people who have decided on this. So then Sita Devi enters the fire and she jumps into it. And, and maybe I should end it, end it here. But uh, a few more sentences would be that uh, from the fire immediately douses. It, it puts off, although it's a big funeral fire, when, you, the fire, when she enters, the fire douses. And the celestial being, the fire god, he comes, uh, he comes out of the fire holding Sita Devi in his arms. And then he tells Rama, look, I am burnt. Look at my skin. I am burnt. I am the fire god and I am burnt. And look at Sita, the sweat on her chest, on her shoulder, on her throat. You can still see. And you can still see the freshness of the, of the flowers in her hair. The bees are still alive. So when Sita Devi entered the fire, me, the fire got, got, got burnt. But even the sweat on her body is still, uh, is still there. You can see. I end. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you mentioned you feel this is a, a, a controversial story in recent years. Is that true? Yes, this is a controversial story, yes. Mm -hmm. Because much of the interpretation has been that the man, Rama, asked the woman to enter the fire. It doesn't happen that way. It's the woman who chooses to do that. There is a huge shift in perspective, yeah, between these two narratives. And does the story tell us what happens after, uh, what happens next? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I thought we ran out of time, yeah, or, or We have what? another minute or two, I mean, uh, does does uh, what does Sita do next? Sita doesn't do anything next. So she sort of uh, exonerated. It's not exonerated. The fi the fire god does this. Mm -hmm. Then the celestial beings try to calm Rama down from his battle anger, and uh, yeah, things like this. This is all Sita's part. Is this? She is brought back freshly from the fire god. Uh, back to her husband and the people. Mm -hmm. The story goes on later into Rama and then his crowning of crowning and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the point here is that the woman who could is, the, Sita Devi is a courageous, strong woman. At any point in the last few months, if she was harmed, she could have chosen to battle or she could have chosen to die. She doesn't do it, not because of lack of courage but because of you know her love for her husband you know that's the most important thing for her 
So somehow Rama proves that to everybody in front of in everybody. So it's a kind of a it's a kind of a very subtle way to do it, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful story. I, I love this part of it. It's terribly misinterpreted. But... Hmm. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, everyone.